Pretty much every country seems to have different standards for displaying things like dates, monetary values, and thousand and decimal separators. Ext has a lot of built-in support to help you navigate all these regional quirks. To use built-in locales, you have to include an extra script from the ext locales source folder. Let's take a look at one of these and see what it does. If you look at the ext lang n file, you can see that it overrides a series of common classes within the ext framework and replaces some of their fields with translated versions. These fields are then used in the class to display text. You can also see how the file overrides things such as the number formatting utility classes to handle things like thousand separators and decimal points. Let's now compare that to another language file. You can see a similar structure, but now everything is in Spanish. Including these files is a good way to control the language, but remember, this will need server-side logic and a reload of the application to activate the changes. Of course, not all content comes from our front-end code, so we need to make sure that what we're sending from the server is also in the correct language. By default, the user's browser will send language accept headers based on the browser settings. These headers express a series of language codes in order of preference, based on the user's browser settings. The queue parameter then gives a weighting to each preference. However, Users may not have set their preferred language in the browser, so we may need to capture this within the application. We need a way to ensure that we pass back the correct language requirements to the server, so it can include the right locale files. Let's create a quick drop-down in our login dialog box to choose and set a language for the application. This will also need a controller to store the chosen value. We want these values sent as a header with every request that the application makes, so let's add a listener to ext request. This will make sure that any content negotiation done on the server returns the right language. We can use this technique to override whatever the browser defaults are. We can now read the request header on the server to return the right content. Many frameworks like the Java Spring framework include special handlers for these language headers but of course you can handle them yourself in any way you choose on the server. We've now sorted out basic localization for numbers and dates, and we've got the right content coming from the server. Next, we need to make sure that our application is in the right language and that we can work with authors and translators to get the right strings in place. The framework is pretty free on this issue and does not really support or mandate any particular method. Nor do we have the sort of resource file mechanism familiar from desktop and native mobile app development. One way to get around this is to create a JavaScript translations file, which acts a bit like a resources file, and to keep all your strings in there. This is a great method if you're starting a new application. You can just have every string refer back to a resource name in that global file, and make sure that you have a matching key in your strings file. Another approach is to use the Unix get text pattern. This consists of finding instances of text in our application, and wrapping them with a call to a function called underscore. This might be a little confusing if you're using the popular underscore JavaScript library anywhere in your application, so you should feel free to pick a good short name for this global function. The function itself should take the text from your application and look up a translation for the appropriate language. If it can't find one, it just returns the text that it was passed, so we have a good default English fallback. This can be more effective when you're adding a translation which might not be quite complete to an existing application. 